Hello students, welcome to e Sala. I am Mrs. Esoda, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Interior Design and Decor, MMAS Women's Arts and Science College, Belo, Tamil Nadu. In this module, I am going to explain you about landscape designing, that is the history and development of gardening in India and the famous landscape gardens in India. Landscape designing is an art as well as an independent profession practiced by landscape designers combining both nature and culture. It focuses mainly on two aspects, the landscape planning and the gardening. Gardening has been developed in India through the ages. Flowers and gardens are very important part of the life of Indian people for three main considerations, namely aesthetic, economic and social. They have been closely associated with the Indian culture from the Vedic times that is between 3000 to 2000 BC. The changes in gardening occur due to the influence of different cultures, religions, various kings and rulers during the early historic periods and in the recent times due to vast knowledge and advances in scientific technology. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the history and development of gardening in India and the most famous landscape gardens in India. The objective of this lesson is to make the students to understand the meaning and landscape designing, trace out the history and development on gardening in India, know the famous gardens in India. First, we will elaborate on the history and development of gardening in India. It is believed that the gardening India is as old as its culture. It is understood that Indians are very the first to choose gardening as the proper atmosphere for meditation. The origin and history of systematic gardening in India is as old as Indus Valley Civilization of Harappa. This is the first recorded history of civilization which existed between 2500 BC and 1750 BC. Before the Aryans came, the trees were associated with the human life in many ways is quite clear from the seals available of that period. Harappan pots were generally decorated with the design of trees. This confirms that the trees, climbers and other ornamental plants were associated with the Harappan civilization. First, we are going to see the gardening during epic era. Aryans came to India about 1600 BC. The country at the time was called as Aryavarta which means the country of lotus and sunshine because the lakes were studded with lotus flowers and there were wide open spaces. Lotus being a native India found everywhere. The Aryans had aesthetic sense and they appreciated the beauty of flowering plants, lakes, mountains, forests, etc. Gardening has been mentioned in classical literature of India. The epics of Aryans, the Ramayana and Mahabharata believe to have been written during 500 BC mentioned about the gardens, trees and flowers. At that time, the cities were having wide street, large houses, noble palaces and gardens. These gardens were planted with trees, flowers and lakes were full of lotuses. In Ramayana, it has been mentioned that the palaces had beautiful gardens with numerous flowers and shady plants. From the wall paintings, sculptures and rocket temples and from Sanskrit literature, we can get a fairly accurate idea of garden development from the 1st to 5th century AD. About 57 BC, the great poet Kalidas has described the pleasure gardens with beautiful ornamental trees and climbers of that era in number of his books. Kalidas in one of his drama has described a machine which is similar to our present day water sprayers. The concept of a pleasure garden with the use of water was fully developed and utilized. In the literature, nearly 30 different types of lily ponds have been described. Vatsayana between 300 and 400 AD described four kinds of gardens which were made for the kings, queens, courtiers and ministers. Pramodayan is used 
as a private garden of the king and the queen. Udayan where the kings passed their leisure time. Vrikshavatika was the garden for ministers and courtiers where they made merry with courtians. Nandayan was a special garden dedicated to Lord Indra. All these gardens had water pool studded with lotuses and lilies, flowering and fragrant shrubs, trees and climbers. Next, we will discuss about the development of gardens during the Buddhist period. When we talk about the gardening in Buddhist era, we realized that the life of Buddha was associated with a number of trees from his birth to his death. Birthplace of Buddha which has been described by Huan Swong who visited the India in 630 AD. According to his description, there was a bathing tank filled with clear water, lotus and lilies. From about 300 BC onwards, the greatest gardens in India were built by Buddhist monks. They beautified their monasteries and viharas by planting trees and other flowering plants on a large scale for making surrounding peaceful and ideal for meditation. From the point of view of cultural and artistic development, the Mauryan period which is from 322 to 185 BC could be considered as one of the best periods in the history of India. King Asoga not only loved trees and parks but gave royal orders to plant trees and develop gardens all over his kingdom. King Asoga could also be considered as the father of roadside avenue planting as he was the first king to order planting of roadside avenue trees in India. This planting of roadside avenue trees was known as Margaviriksha. The art of gardening developed during this time was introduced in neighboring east countries like Thailand, Korea, China and Japan along with the Buddhist religion. During the time of King Somadeva that is in the 11th century and King Hamira in 13th century, gardening developed into a fine art. The vanas and ashrams gave way to gardens established by kings and nobles. According to an information about the Chola kings around the 10th and 11th century AD in South India, their cities well developed with well planned gardens. The great South Indian temples, gems of Indian architecture usually had water tanks in their compounds with gardens attached to them. Invariably, such gardens were called Nandavanam that means heavenly gardens. Next, I am going to elaborate on the gardens which were established during Mughal era. The period between the beginnings of the 14th century to the end of 16th century showed sudden change in the style of gardening due to the influence of Mughal emperors. During the period of Mughal emperors, many gardens were laid out in India and many ornamental plants were introduced from Africa, China, Japan, Europe and America. The early Islamic gardens in India were designed by Persians and very much resemble the gardens of Iran. Some of the typical features include pools, fountains and canals inside the gardens. They use the term Ba or Bagicha for garden. The first glorious period of Mughal gardening in India was made by Feroz Shah between 1352 and 1388 AD. The king is best known for his love of gardens. Sultan Feroz Shah developed more than 1200 gardens in and around Ferozabad, which is known as now Delhi. Babur was the first Mughal emperor who introduced the gardening techniques in India. He had high aesthetic sense. He built the Ramba and Zoraba at Agra. Aramba at Agra is still being maintained beautifully by archaeological department of India. Mughal gardens are built by formal style of gardening. This style of gardening was preserved by Mughal descendants and many gardens on similar styles were made. Several modifications like addition of two or more terraces with a central canal of running water with flowing fountains, waterfall in the form of water sheet and bardari structure were made. 
The square or rectangular flower beds and trees like cypress are also special features of Mughal gardens. Broadly, Mughal gardens can be grouped into two categories. One is the pleasure garden of king and queen, where made with sole purpose of pleasure of king, queen and family members. The second one is tomb garden, which were attached to tombs of king or queen for giving peace to dead person. When we talk about Akbar period, Akbar was a very popular king and ruled the India very successfully between 1556 and 1605 AD. Gardens at Fatehpur Sikri, Sikindra in Agra, Nasimba in Kashmir were established during Akbar's period. Next to the history and development of Indian gardens, the Mughal king Jahangir in the period between 1605 and 1627 AD contributed a lot. Jahangir along with his garden loving wife Nur Jahan laid out many gardens all over his kingdom. Famous gardens built by Jahangir at different locations are Sholimar Garden at Lahore, Achabal Garden, Verina Garden in Kashmir, Yidimat Ud Daula in Agra, Kusruba at Allahabad and Lake Palace in Udaipur. The contributions of Shah Jahan in the period between 1628 and 1658 AD to gardening were immense and he built the famous gardens like Shalimar Ba at Delhi, Chasma Sahi at Srinagar, Red Fort Garden in Delhi, Fort Garden in Agra and Taj Mahal Garden. The Nisha Ba, one of the most beautiful terrace garden was constructed on the Dal Lake of Kashmir by Ashaf Khan who is a minister of Shah Jahan. Aurangasip laid out a beautiful terrace garden in the plains of India known as the Pinjuri Garden in Punjab and constructed a beautiful garden in Aurangabad. Mughal emperors also made several gardens along with roads for taking rest during travel from one place to another. Till today, these gardens exhibit their style and enjoy high esteem in the hearts of people. They are architecturally superb, aesthetically designed and create a breathtaking sight. Next, we are going to discuss about Rajput Gardens. The gardens developed between 1590 and 1750 AD. At one time, Rajput Gardens in India were famous. Raja Mon Singh constructed a large lake with a beautiful garden with th three terraces of different shapes in amber. Other best known gardens are Palace Garden in the city of Jaipur, Jodhpur Garden, Manduri Garden and Deek Garden. Next, we will pass on to the development of garden during British period. During the 16th century, when British came to India, they introduced the styles of gardening of England and continental Europe. There was a lot of garden activity in India done by both British people and by our Indian kings. The oldest botanical garden in India is Lalba, Bengaluru, which was founded by the King Hyder Ali in 1760 AD. With the fall of Tipu Sultan, the garden was taken over by the Britisher. In North India, Maharaja Rajit Singh made an impressive garden at Amritsar. Several great gardens were established by the British people in India. They first developed the formal or symmetrical style of gardening. As this style, become monotonous and then informal style or natural gardens begin to develop in the 18th century. The modern gardens developed during 19th century and 20th centuries involved the combination of the formal and informal styles. The important features in English gardens are lawn, rockery, mixed borders of herbaceous perennials, annuals, shrubs, etc. They have taken effort to improve the gardening in three ways such as introduction of exotic plants from England and other countries, establishments of botanical gardens and compilation of local plants of different regions. A number of botanical gardens were established in different parts of India where exotic plants were introduced, assessed and maintained by the Britishers. The Important botanical gardens developed by them are Royal Agri Horticulture Society Garden Kolkata, Lloyd Botanical Garden at Darjeeling, Botanical Gardens at 
Saharanpur, National Botanical Garden, Lucknow, Botanical Garden of the Forest Research Institute, Dehradun, Lalba Botanical Garden in Bengaluru, Government Botanical Garden at Udakamant, and the Botanical Garden in Coimbatore and Bryan Park in Kodakanal. In these botanical gardens, valuable plant materials have been planted family wise and labeled. This helped in the preservation of plant materials. Next, we will see about the development of garden in the post independence period. There have been radical changes in the field of ornamental gardening during post independence period. Tremendous achievements have been made in our country in three aspects such as conscious planning for improving total environment, commercial floriculture and teaching and research of ornamental horticulture at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Several gardens in different districts have been laid out to provide active and passive recreational facilities and to improve the environment. Today's gardens are deviated from traditional Mughal gardens in their layout. As a general rule, landscaping of public and private buildings has become an integral part of planning. Departments like urban development, archaeological department and tourism are actively involved in improving the total environment of buildings by conscious planning and planting trees. Green bells are also provided in industrial towns to reduce air pollution. With this, we can conclude the topic history and development of gardening in India and next we will pass on to famous landscape gardens found in India. Apart from the gardens as we have mentioned earlier, there are several other beautiful gardens were found in India. The forms of gardens that can be found in India are Mauryan gardens, Hindu gardens, Mughal gardens, Rajput gardens and British gardens. Some of the famous gardens in India are discussed here. First, the important garden is Brindavan garden which is located in the state of Karnataka about 20 km away from Mysore. The park is adjoined to the Krishnaraja Sagara dam that is built across the river Kaveri. The 60 acres garden is one of the most tourist attraction in India. The garden is laid out in three terraces which contain water fountains and has topiary oaks and pergolas. One of the main attractions of this garden is the musical fountain. The second garden is the law garden which is a public garden located in the heart of the city of Ahmedabad. The garden got its name from the law college that is situated adjoining to this place. Innumerable recreational options such as music, theatre and various rites for kids are available here. Pinjori Garden is also known as Yadavindra Gardens. It was built in 17th century and located 20 km from Chandigarh. The Silating Mughal Garden is a famous picnic spot that features a mini zoo, a Japanese garden, plants nursery and historic palaces. Salimar Garden is located behind Delhi University just 10 km away from Old Delhi and is one among the significant Mughal garden. The other important Salimar Garden which was built by Emperor Jahangir for his wife Nujahan in 1660. The garden has four terraces. Some of the major highlights of this garden are the fountains, innumerable variety of flowers and shaded trees. Next we will see about the rock garden in Darjeeling which is located 10 km away from Darjeeling. The garden was established by the Korga Hill Council Tourism Department to attract the tourists. The main attraction of the garden is the sitting spaces provided at different levels of the garden that makes it a popular multi-level picnic spot for tourists. Another important rock garden is a Sculpture Garden located in Chandigarh, India. It was developed by Nekchand and was inaugurated in 1976. It is completely built of home and industrial waste as well as thrown away items. The major aspect of this park is the humanoid figures made of bottles, glasses, bangles, tiles, ceramic pots and sinks that stand in rows that are placed in walled pots.
Mughal garden which is spread over 6 hectares of land within the Rashtrapati Bhavan complex, New Delhi is a very famous one. These gardens are a combination of the Mughal style and the British garden style. The garden contains multi-level terraces, canals and flowering shrubs along with hedges, lawns and flower beds. Nishaba is a Mughal garden located on the edge of Dal Lake in Srinagar. The garden was designed in 1633 by Asaf Khan. The garden offers a great view of the Dal Lake and the snow covered mountains of Pir Panjar ranges. A beautiful water channel flows through the middle of the garden. The entire garden is enchanted with its number of flower beds and fountains and trees. The next important garden is the Hanging Gardens of Mumbai which is also known as Ferosa Mehta Gardens. The garden got its name as it is located on the slope of the hill. The entire garden is constructed over three water reservoirs that are pumped to supply drinking water to the whole city. Some of the main features of this park are the sunset view over the Arabian Sea. The hedge carved into shapes of different animals and flower clock. Jalian Walaba is noted for the mass acre that took place under British rule on April 13, 1990. Later in 1951, the ground was transformed into a park to commemorate the murder of the demonstrators in this mass acre. It is located 400 meters north of the Golden Temple, Amritsar. At the entrance of the garden, a memorial plaque has been constructed that recounts the history. The remnants of the walls of the well on the north side in which many people try to escape are still preserved to display the bullet holes. Within the complex of the garden, a Martius gallery is also present that portrays the awful tale of massacre. Lalba Garden which is a famous botanical garden located in Bengaluru. In 1856, Lalba attained the status of a government botanical garden. It is today well known throughout the world as the center for scientific study of plants, conservation of plants and botanical artworks. Some of the major highlights of this garden is its magnificent glass house, its artistic landscape and the expansive lush lawns with abundance of flower beds, lotus pools and fountains. Chambal Garden is one of the most beautiful picnic spot in the city of Kota, India. It is situated on the banks of the Chambal River. The centerpiece of this pond is the pond that is stocked with crocodiles. The next important park we are going to see is Lloyd's Botanical Garden which is situated in Darjeeling in West Bengal. It is a distant extension of the Indian Botanical Garden, Kolkata. This garden is famous for the wide variety of species that are native to the Himalayan hilly region, Sikkim and other neighboring regions. Besides, several other rare and exotic plants are also preserved here. The garden has a separate conservatory for cocktail and succulent plants that has around 150 species. The next garden is Kalindi Kunj which is a bubbly garden and a popular picnic spot located between Delhi and its neighboring territories of Faridabad and Maida. The garden is set along the bank of the river Yamuna. The garden is famous for its musical and colorful fountains. Kulaba which is also known as Saji Nivas garden is one of the most beautiful gardens of Udaipur. During 1815s, Maharaja Sajain Singh took the initiative to build this beautiful garden spread across 100 acres of land. It is the largest garden of Rajasthan and renowned for its copious varieties of roses. Due to abundance of rose flowers, this garden has got the name Gulab Ba or Rose Garden. It is an amazing park with its assortment of exotic variety of roses very rarely found in the land of our country. Botanical Garden in Oti is spread over 55 acres of land. It houses more than 2000 exact species of trees and plants from all over the world. The garden is preserved by the Horticultural Department of 
government of Tamil Nadu with the wide variety of plants including different variety of roses, rare flowering plants, shrubs and a fossil tree trunk which is believed to be 20 million years old, the garden is favorite among the tourists. The Indian Botanical Gardens also known as the Royal Botanical Garden is situated in Howrah near Kolkata. The garden is spread over 109 hectares and displays a wide variety of plants and a collection of more than 12,000 specimens. One of the major attractions of this garden is the great banyan tree that is considered to be one of the largest trees in the world. Simspot which is the landmark of the second largest hill station Kunu in Tamil Nadu. This is a 12 hectare park and is also home to an assortment of 1000 exotic plant species which include trees, ferns, pines, magnolia and some very rare and old trees. At last we can see the Prayan Park which is established in Kodaikanal, Tamil Nadu in an area of 10 acres which attracts many tourists. Come to a conclusion, in this module we have discussed about the history of landscape gardening, development of gardens through the ages from Harappan civilization to the modern period and the most famous gardens of India. It is evident from the discussion that gardening is always connected with a history of people and their culture which includes their science, art and literature. I hope that the detailed history of gardening will help you to trace out the development of gardening in India. The famous gardens of India which were built in different period by different rulers have shown the aesthetic sense, skill and creativity of great Indians.